So we are uh, very glad, after all, to have Olivia Schiffman from the University of Paris, who will speak about COHA of zero dimensional shifts on surfaces and P equal W conjecture. Olivia, please. Yes, thank you. So I will get to P equal W conjecture only towards the end uh, because. Uh, yeah, I think there are still many things that one can do with uh, Hecke operators on surfaces. Um, so, okay. So maybe here's the plan. Uh, first, say a few things about usual, just as a motivation, usual Hecke operators, and that's on curves. And then, uh, talk about uh, two-dimensional Hecke operators. And really it's the, I want to talk about, so surfaces. And I want to talk about the algebra that they form. So it's not yet an algebra of operators, it's just an algebra, abstract algebra. And then I want to uh, explain uh, how uh, these uh, two-dimensional Hecke operators can act on uh, interesting moduli spaces. And that's, that's uh, not so easy. And actually in the recent proof of P equals W, um, we did not have this technology or we did not want to use it. Uh, and so we had to go through a complicated argument with uh, elliptic locus and, and parabolic structures. But um, I want to explain how one can hope to uh, remove all these complications. And then uh, finally, I will uh, present some applications. And so uh, there is, of course, P equals W, I will just do a brief sketch, but then there are some other applications that are nice. Uh, one is, uh, let's say some kind of extension of uh, Markman's theorem on uh, tautological uh, cohomology ring of moduli spaces of sheaves on surfaces. And, um, and also uh, some new uh, simple proof of some uh, chi independence uh, result for uh, Higgs bundles, moduli of Higgs bundles. Okay, that's, that's, that's the plan, we'll see. Uh, how, how well I, I can achieve it. So uh, please don't hesitate to ask questions. Also, I have a, an old um, tablet. So I, you don't see my face and I'm just talking to my tablet. So really don't hesitate to um, interrupt me. Uh, okay, so uh, let me say just a few words as motivation about usual Hecke operators. So this is just motivation. Uh, so let's fix X, a smooth projective curve defined over a finite field. And in this uh, Langlands program, automorphic forms over function fields, we're interested in the following. Let me denote by okay, automorphic forms uh, for GLR. Uh, over the Adele of X and ramified uh, coefficient in, in C. This is just a very fancy thing to say that I'm looking at the uh, functions with compact support on uh, bun uh, R of X, the FQ points uh, valued in C. Okay, so this is just the FQ points, just the um, uh, function on the um, set of uh, uh, FQ vector bundles 
over x of rank r. Okay, uh, of course you can um, decompose this thing as a direct sum over all possible degrees of this function when you change the rank and the degree. Um, okay, and that's your space of automorphic forms. And the Hecke operators, the Hecke operators are obtained as a modification. So they encode the operation of modification of uh, bundles at a point in X. So um, uh, one way to, to, to consider this is to consider, um, let's, let's just do the, the, the first version. Uh, X times bun R D uh, X. And then there's a correspondence from this to bun R D plus one of X. And here, let me just denote bun tilde R D D plus one maybe. And so what is this space in the middle? It's the space of modifications. So I have one vector bundle included in another one where uh, the ratio of the two is isomorphic to OX for some uh, X in the curve, the skyscraper sheaf. And this map here forgets the subobject. And this maps here, this map here, uh, it, it remembers the support. Uh, where you modify and the subobject. Okay, so if you want, uh, let me change color. Uh, this is something like an X bundle. Well, not not quite, but close. And uh, this is a, a fiber is a quote scheme. The fiber is a quote scheme or here open subset of a quote scheme. Um, okay, sorry. So now if you if you pass to functions, you see that you start with a function on on the x cross burn R D. Maybe you fix a point x and you, you uh, have a function on burn R D, then you can use this um, left map to pull it back to burn tilde, and then you integrate uh, by pushing forward to burn rd plus one. And this is what the Hecke operators are. So let me uh, say it a little bit better, better formulation. Oops, maybe I, I should just... Uh, so better formulation. Uh, I look at the, the space, the set, if you want here, I'm just talking about sets. All of this can be made at level of sets. I'm looking at uh, the sets of uh, length L sheaves on X. And I want to uh, include also in my vector bundles, I want to allow degenerations. So I will look at the set of all sheaves of rank R and degree D. And then I have, again, uh, some modification here. I allowed modification of, by a sheaf of length L. Let's call this Q and let's call this P. And, and then I can consider the space of functions on uh, Koch 0L, tensor space of functions on Koch Rd, this is over fq points. And I have a map to the space of functions on Koch R T plus L. And uh, what is this map? This is uh, pull back by Q and integrate. Okay, so this gives me this uh, map and this uh, induces an action of uh, operators 
uh, which uh, uh, um, you can put together into an algebra of the algebra of Hecke operators. So if you choose a function on core zero L, then you get an operator. Okay, and this is what is called this Hecke operator associated to this function. Um, but now you can consider a very similar diagram that tells you how composition of Hecke operators behave. That it's again a Hecke operator of a certain kind. Um, so different so, different points do not talk to each other, so it's commutative. Or what? Yep, uh, yep. So I will I will give the structure of this. So you're right. It will decompose as a big commuting tensor product over all points of x. Yep. So uh, this is just an action of the algebra of Hick operators, and so um, let's denote it h uh, x of fq, just to explain that I'm working with fq. So now this is the sum for all L of the space of functions on core zero L uh, with the product. And how is the product obtained? Well, you do the same um, diagrams, but now just with uh, modifications themselves. zero n plus l q and p and so this multiplication is uh, again q upper star p lower star so this is what's called uh, the Hecke algebra Hecke algebra in the theory of automorphic forms uh, for function fields okay so Algebra formed by functions on the different uh, Koch zero L. So uh, length L sheaves on your curve. And um, with this multiplication. Uh, any questions before I change page? Okay, so as Jan um, observed, uh, this is very classical result. Uh, I don't know who it's due, it's an old one. It tells you that uh, this algebra, well, it decomposes as the commuting tensor product over all points, all closed points of X of, uh, let's say, H X. So a commuting tensor product of algebras. And uh, moreover, uh, Hx is isomorphic to, um, well, it's a, there are many ways to see it, but let me just say it's a, a polynomial, uh, polynomial algebra and infinitely many variables. Um, so commuting uh, polynomial algebra. And there is a degree on here, which is the length. And of course, the uh, degree of P L X is L times uh, the degree of X. Okay, so we have a bunch product. And one way to think about it is that um, this is the uh, half of uh, Heisenberg algebra. from one point of view. From another point of view, it is a half of the spherical affine Hecke algebra uh, equals half of spherical affine Hecke algebra. But uh, because it works for all groups at the same time, in fact, it's of GL infinity. So GLR would just be symmetric polynomials in R variables, and now it's symmetric polynomials in infinitely many variables. So you can think of it as a spherical affine Hecke algebra of GL infinity. Okay, and this, so this is an interesting commutative algebra. And then the game is to diagonalize the action on the space of automorphic forms. 
And somehow that's one of the aims of this Langlands program, one of the tools in the Langlands program. Uh, okay, any questions? Good. Uh, for complex numbers, if you replace finite field by complex numbers, it should be more complicated. Yeah. Yes, then you are in this realm of this recent work of uh, Franco. You have there is some analysis that you would need to do. Also, uh, you have to make sure that you can actually define the product. So you need to use uh, some. I, I I'm not too familiar with it, but I can see that you have to. Um, yeah, you, you will run into some more interesting uh, objects involving some more analytic things. Yeah, in case if you still want this tensor decomposition, yeah, or you can consider just the motivic whole algebra of your curve. Mm -hmm. so, but then you will not have this tensor product. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, now a natural question is uh, two dimensional Hecke operators. So uh, the idea is, uh, so now let's say S is a surface, uh, smooth, uh, we can have it projected if we want. And uh, we could say first attempt, uh, idea is uh, S is defined over FQ and we consider the space of functions on uh, Koch zero, zero L of S. So this means uh, length L, uh, length L sheaves. So rank zero, the first churn character, CH1 is zero, and then CH2 is L. Uh, we can take the direct sum over all L and we can define a product. That's that's true. You can do it, but um, what is it? Uh, it's not it's not commutative for sure, and I think nobody really knows what it is. And it's not clear that it's such a good algebra. Maybe it's. Uh, uh, I don't know what uh, Kapranov and uh, Eric did. Uh, uh, they wrote some paper. Ah, it was Koha. It was not. Yes, that's or, that's uh, why okay. I'm moving. That's where I'm ah, moving right, right now. All right. So a long time ago, I think they kind of studied some things like this. And in order to have anything meaningful, they needed to impose some conditions on the sheaves. So length L sheaves, but uh, maybe scheme theoretically supported on the curve or something like this. And, and then you have some, you can understand this algebra, but if you just take all lengths L sheaves on the surface, I think it's very difficult. Uh, there is one, one guy that's uh, been working on similar problems for a while, but it's over F1. So over F1, you have um, uh, some, some model for this uh, category of sheaves, which is purely combinatorial. And uh, so this is work of Matt uh, Chesney. So there's a purely combinatorial picture. Combinatorial algebra that are interesting. I mean, the combinatorial structure is interesting. It's intriguing, but um, uh, it's still uh, mysterious. Okay, so that's the first idea. And then the second idea is uh, replace um, the functions of uh, Koch 0, 0, L by the homology or cohomology, but let's say Borelmo homology. I will drop the BM from now on, but on, on these things. Uh, and, and then it turns out that you can actually define a nice algebra that, that has uh, lots of good properties. Um, so it's some kind of uh, cohomological whole algebra. 
or in this case, cohomological Hecke algebra. So the light motif is uh, over curves. Uh, you can define the, the usual function theoretic whole algebra. It's very interesting. Um, over a surface, somehow this function, uh, functional, I don't know, FQ version of whole algebra or Hecke algebra is, is too difficult, maybe not interesting, but there's a cohomological version. And actually, uh, one, one point, one just uh, observation is that, uh, so this is the, let's say, co Hecke, is that um, the Hecke algebra over FQ of a curve X is strongly related to the co cohomological Hecke algebra of uh, T star of X, right? And now uh, this is over C. So that's that's like one of the ideas you can um, take away to try to understand what uh, these uh, Hecke algebras, cohomological Hecke algebras look like. Okay, uh, so I should spend some time uh, defining them. So, uh definition well no before before definition let me give some uh, we need some geometry so um so s is a smooth surface over c and uh, Koch, let me just put zero L. Everything is of rank zero, length L. S, this is the stack of length L coherent sheaves on S. Uh, so it's a stack of finite type. Uh, it is singular, and it is of uh, dimension L, uh, and it's a virtual dimension zero, which means that uh, the best way to understand this would be to say that this has a derived structure, it has a canonical derived structure. Um, but so when you when you describe it as a moduli stack of objects, uh, these are objects in some um, two Calabiao category, and um, and so the stack has some derived structure. The cotangent complex has amplitude between minus one and one, has a nice symmetry property, and because it has amplitude between minus one and one, it is derived. So I don't so, want to spend. So, so yeah. it's two Calabiao regardless of what your surface is. Yeah. So it can be. It's not necessarily that the surface itself is Calabiao. Yeah. Yeah. So you have this um, uh, property that uh, between the x of the sheaves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because they're all finite length, the finite support. Um, Okay, so um, so now you can define the Borel homology of such things. Um, this is uh, this is well defined. Um, and maybe I just give one example. Uh, Example, uh, Koch zero one uh, is S times BGM. That's the classical stack. There is a derived structure, but the classical stack is just S times BGM. Uh, maybe another example. Uh, if S, S is A two, 
then uh, Koch 0L. This is, uh, again, the classical stack. This is the commuting variety of GLL, quotient by GLL. Commuting variety of pairs of matrices that, that commute. And again, it has a derived structure. Uh, okay, so now on this direct sum for L greater or equal of zero, let me denote this H of S. Uh, this has an algebra structure. So I want to say a few words. about uh, how this is done. So you want to take the same diagram as before. So you have Koch 0 L1, Koch 0 L2, Koch tilde L1 L2, Koch 0 L1 plus L2. Let's call this map Q, let's call this map P. So again, P is proper. Now you have to be careful because Q is not smooth. So uh, you have to be careful in how you define a, a pullback. So uh, the point is that, um, so Koch tilde L1, L2, you can identify it with the total space as a derived scheme, as a, sorry, derived stack over Koch L01 cross Koch L02, you can identify it with the total space of a certain complex, uh, which is this R home complex. E uh, L1, E L2, shifted by one. So why this? Because I told you that Q was essentially, I mean, Koch tilde is like the X1 bundle. It classifies extensions between um, the elements in Koch 0L1 and Koch 0L2. And uh, so it has something to do with X1. And the best way to understand it is to consider the full R home complex um, and then shift it by one. So you put X1 in, in, in the right degree. Uh, and, and there you see the derived structure. So H0 is X1, then H minus one will be home. And you also have some X2 that is responsible for the derived structure. And um, yes, okay. So uh, now how can we define the pullback under this? So we, we uh, consider, uh, a uh, presentation of this complex. Let's say this complex. So C is going to be say E minus one, E zero, E one, where the EI are vector bundles on this uh, Koch 0L1 times Koch 0L2. And so the classical stack, Koch tilde L1, L2, let's say classical, classical truncation. This is, so this is A, B, this is a kernel of B uh, quotient by E minus one this quotient stack. So um, E0 is a vector bundle on this thing. So kernel of E0 is, a, well, it can jump. It's not a vector bundle anymore, but it's a closed substack of this vector bundle E0. E minus one acts is also a vector bundle. You can view it as an affine group scheme on Koch times Koch, and it acts on kernel of B by uh, you know, translation. And so you can perform this quotient. And this is what this classical stack is. So you see that it is, it is singular, uh, 
precisely because kernel of B can jump, the dimension can jump. And the dimension jumps exactly when the X2 uh, jumps. So, so this, this, um, this map Q here is well behaved on, on um, the subsets where uh, the X2 between the two sheaves, one on Koch 0 L1 and one on Koch 0 L2 is constant. So that's, that's how it's, it's, uh, it behaves, this map Q. Okay, so this is singular. But um, of course, kernel of B1 is the zero set of the section of some line bundle on the total space of E0. So let me just write uh, how the two steps that you can do. So kernel of B, B minus one, this is uh, inside of E0 divided by E minus one. This is smooth over the product Koch 0 L1 times Koch 0 L2. And this is inclusion. So this is smooth. And this is inclusion of a zero section of B, where you view B um, as a section going from E0 to well, let's say zero inclusion of zero set of section B of uh, E one over E zero E one you can view it as a vector bundle over total space of E zero just by pullback. And then uh, this is the inclusion. So let's call this map Q1, Q2. So you define Q upper shriek is Q1 upper star. This is smooth pullback. And then uh, Q2 upper shriek, and this is refined Giesin pullback. So it's defined using. Uh, intersection theory. Okay, and, and so from all of this, you can define the multiplication from the homology of Koch 0L1, tensor the homology of Koch 0L2 to the homology of Koch 0L1 plus L2, uh, just by, uh, this uh, oops. Uh, Q upper shriek P lower star. Okay. Oops, no. Yes, yeah, the other way around. Okay, and then a theorem uh, that is due to many people. It starts with Mignettes, and then there's also Negutz is somewhere. Yu Zhao, uh, myself, and Francesco, and Kapranov and Vasso. This was uh, rediscovered and, and extended many times. Uh, Mauro uh, Porta Sala, okay. Or maybe maybe also other people, Davidson, some other language. Um, so this is an associative algebra. Okay. Uh, any questions? Uh, in the construction, uh, how important is that uh, uh, it's uh, uh, zero, uh, the, the support is zero dimension? Not important. That's a good point. So, uh, good point. This extends. I wouldn't say easily because one good thing here 
is that all these stacks are a finite type. So Borelmo homology of stacks of finite type that's easy to define. Uh, when you extend to sheaves, modulized stacks of sheaves of higher rank, um, if you want to impose some support condition, maybe sheaves of higher rank um, supported along a fixed curve, something like this, then uh, the structure of the stack is more complicated. It's only locally of finite type. And then you have to be able to define Bohemo homology for derived stacks, which are locally of finite type. And it can be done, but it's really technical. So you should look in the paper of Porta and Sala, where they have this framework. In, in the original paper of Sala and myself, we kind of used a naive approach. Also, Kapranov Vasco used a naive approach. You just take the projective limit over all finite type open substacks. But then this is not the right way to. It works in these in the cases we were interested in by some for reasons of purity or something, but it's not the right uh, way to do it. But this extends to stacks of uh, compactly supported sheaves. Of any rank. And actually, I will come to this in just a minute. Uh, that's very important to be able to extend it uh, for application. Um, OK, so here's, here's another theorem that uh, Kapranov and Vasro showed. It's about the greater dimension. So uh, HS, so I mean, that's, that's uh, not part of the theorem. Uh, let me say here, uh, which is uh, N cross Z graded. So this is the length. And this is the cohomological degree. So it has two gradings. And uh, a, a difficult theorem, important and difficult theorem of Kapranov and Vasro computes the greater dimension of these. So it says that HS, so let's say that is isomorphic as a graded vector space to uh, the symmetric product of uh, the cohomology of S tensor, uh, let's say QT, Q of uh, QT, where the degree of Q is uh, minus two, zero, uh, it should be I should say zero minus two. So I, I cannot read tensor product over what? Ah, tensor product over just a, a Q. Ah, over Q, yeah, okay. And then Q times T times- Ah, okay, okay, okay. Just a shift in the grading. Uh -huh. So the degree of Q is zero minus two, and the degree of T is one, zero. So in other words, a good approximation is HS is deformation of the enveloping algebra or the symmetric algebra of a Lie algebra that would look like a double loop algebra, uh, meaning two positive loops uh, modeled on the cohomology of the, of the curve, of the surface. Um, Okay, so that's that's the theorem about, theorem about the size, and then recent theorem um, is about the precise structure of this. So maybe I just give an example. Uh, if S is a two, and we quotient out by the two torus, let's say a two plus um, t equivariant. plus T equivalent action, no, plus T, plus T action. This means that you take T equivalent homology. Right, uh, and uh, replace 
by um, T equivalent homology, uh, where T is isomorphic to C star square. So in this case, um, H S, let's say T, is this uh, affine Yangian of GL one hat, the positive half. Um, affine Yangian. of GL1, uh, affine union of GL1. Yeah. Oops, there's just one um, one hat, sorry. It looks like a double loop algebra, but it's the Yangian of Heisenberg algebra. And, and this algebra now appears in many places. Um, so this, this was worked out, uh, I should say, by uh, Vasco and myself. Um, and now this algebra appears in many places. Um, on when you're looking at, uh, say, toric varieties, uh, toric surfaces, DT invariants of toric surfaces, um, or things like that. And so uh, what I want to talk about now is a recent result um, with several co-authors I will name that computes this cohomological whole algebra for any surface. Well, yeah. let, let me move to the statement. Any, any question before I change page? Uh, so this uh, seam of whatever, uh, mm, it suggests that indeed, uh, you, you know, there is this notion of BPS algebra, which came mm -hmm. from physics. Yep. And uh, it was constructed, I forgot in what generality, by Davison, first with Meinhardt, mm -hmm. then without him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And so this particularly this mean that this uh, does this theorem uh, 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 corresponds to the fact that the BPS algebra is this uh, affine whatever affine Yangian yes. yeah it, it is yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. okay that's what I uh, that's what I'll explain right now yes ah, okay. exactly um, so. So here's uh, the the theorem. Uh, first of all, uh, we can uh, enrich uh, H uh, S by uh, no no let me let me mention this later when I talk about action. Um, okay, so uh, assume that S is uh, cohomologically pure. For instance, S is projective. Okay, so we cannot de uh, deal with a case where it's not pure, but assume that it is pure. Uh, then here's the theorem. So In theorem particular, is, sorry, uh, modular yes. Hig Higgs bundles is pure. Yep, yes. Oh, okay, so pure pure uh, means that the 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 weight filtration is trivial or something. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, for instance, S is projective. S is T star of X, where X is a smooth or pure curve. Let's say X is a pure curve. So, a particular smooth projective. I mean, for example, smooth projective. Uh, so, um, uh, Melit, Minets, myself, and Vasco. It says the following it says, uh, first of all, HS is generated by uh, its, by the degree one piece generated by um, the homology of Koch 0, 1 uh, S. And, and what is this? This is uh, the following. This is uh, the coma, this is isomorphic. Ah, sorry. Uh, 
this thing is, as I, as I explained, S times BGM, when you forget the derived structure, but the Borel homology doesn't see the derived structure. It's necessary to define the product, but you don't uh, see it when you actually look at the space underlying the algebra. Um, okay, and so this thing here, by Poincaré duality, if you want, it's the same thing as the cohomology of S bracket U. Okay, so the generators are labeled by a cohomology class and the power of U. So, um, U, U of degree two? U is of homological degree minus two. Yes, ah, homological minor. degree two. Mm -hmm. Ah, homological yeah, degree. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, set uh, T. One uh, C is um, C uh, U, sorry, T one L, U power L. Okay, that's in uh, this uh, homology, core zero one S, then uh, H zero is isomorphic to the algebra generated by uh, all these T1L uh, xi uh, modulo, modulo the following relations. So, um, okay, T1L Xi uh, bracket T1N. Um, oops. Xi Xi prime T1N Xi double prime. Is there some kind of uh, multiplicativity of the Xi? T1 N Xi prime, Xi double prime. That's like an uninteresting relation. And then we have um, some quadratic relation. Um, let me see, T1 M Xi T1 L plus three Xi prime minus three T one m plus one uh, I, I cannot yes. read uh, uh, the second indices t1 n ah. or t1 m yeah. um, t1 m of c in the second line t1 m of t1 c. m of c t1 l plus three sorry ah okay so that's important because this three, three is strange yeah uh, well, so you will see T one L plus two of C prime. Um, plus three. T one M plus two. C T one L plus one. C prime minus t m plus three c t yeah one m plus three l that's that's the c prime okay and then also um three other terms so minus t m c t L plus one S two. Uh, what about first indices? Are they still one? Yes, always one. Yes, I should just uh, let, let me. This was stupid okay. of myself. Okay. Let me uh, get rid of this. Uh, okay. Yeah, but one stands for the rank, I believe. So it's something to do with line bundle. So what? Right. But so uh, my generators are all in rank one. So 
so uh, yes and so that's not it's not quite over yet tm plus one what's the argument of tl plus one in the previous S2, I, I will i will tell you s2 is a certain ah. quadratic element uh t l m plus one l uh s2 psi prime so you have this this cubic term that you can recognize uh oops i forgot something here there's a l plus what, what? Oh, no, no. Okay, this is the first relation. This is the second relation. Yes. So the first four terms you can recognize, right? And then the second other terms, they're also kind of they go together. And then there's a third term, which involves some anti-symmetrizer. And then you have to apply it to a certain element, S1 delta psi psi prime equals zero and then there's a cubic relation that i will just not write but it's simple it's much simpler so uh where so s1 is um t1 plus t2 the the problem is that i see s2 i do not see s1 um where is this one? S one, S one is here. Ah, okay, in the very last. Good. Uh, T one square plus T two square, and T one T two are the churn roots of uh, the tangent bundle, and delta is the diagonal class. in uh, h star of s squared. So I want to comment on this. Um, it relation looks a little bit ugly, but first of all, uh, in many instances, s1 and s2 are actually zero. So uh, this is the case when, for instance, um, the surface is symplectic. So if the surface is symplectic, uh, S1 and S2 are zero. If um, the surface is the T star, yes, T star of a, of a curve, that's also zero. So you should view, you should view, um, S1, S2 are deformation parameters. So, um, yes. Okay, so now let, let me, any question? Well, okay. it's, uh, yeah, I, I am kind of very impressed in this a relation but I, uh, how you can i mean how you can see it <laughs> how okay so. yes i will okay so i will i will explain uh, the proof and first first uh, a corollary which is which is the only thing we need for this uh, p equals w so uh, corollary after some work right after some work, uh, assume, uh, let me remember, uh, yes, assume that, actually I was wrong, it's not S1 that needs to be zero, it's uh, S2 and S1 delta, so assume S2, equals s1 delta equals zero so this is some condition on this for instance 
uh, S is symplectic. Then uh, HS is isomorphic to the enveloping algebra of some algebra that we denote WS. And WS is some kind of W1 plus infinity algebra associated to S. So WS is a direct sum, M greater or equal to one, N greater or equal to zero of uh, C times D M N of Xi and Xi is an H star. Well, Xi is a basis. Okay, let me just say, is a span. Uh, okay, Xi in pi, pi a fixed basis of the cohomology of S, um, modulo some relations, or actually no, let me write it because I have some relations. Modulo the relation simply that uh, dmn of xi plus dmn of xi prime is dmn of xi plus xi prime. Okay, with with the bracket. A uh, very simple e bracket dmn of xi dm prime n prime of Xi prime is the determinant uh, times D M plus M prime, N plus N prime minus one of Xi Xi prime. So that's it, yeah. Um, so in general, uh, you should think that the H0S is some kind of deformation of this W algebra. And, and so the way it works is um, T N Xi is just mapping to M D one M of Xi. Okay, so um, Maybe just but, one comment. Yeah, yeah sorry. but th then it somehow looks as a dub uh, double loop algebra. Yeah. Yes, now it looks like a double loop algebra. And now you really have the uh, BPS Lie algebra that you wanted. So WS is the BPS Lie algebra. Mm -hmm. Of uh, say zero dimensional. Sheaves on S. Uh, right. So, in the, in the general case, when S does not satisfy these properties, or maybe uh, you want to put some equivariant structure on S, there's a torus action on S, then uh, you have equivariant uh, churn roots. And so uh, S1 and S2 are non zero. And you have the previous um, previous relations defining the algebra, um, and you should view this as a as a quant quantum deformation of some W one plus infinity algebra modeled on the cohomology of the surface. Um, yes, and what I wanted to say is, in the case of A two, um, in the case of A two, so we had this uh, presentation as an affine Yangian uh, given by quadratic and cubic relations uh, given coming from the whole algebra, elliptic whole algebra, if, if uh, people who know remember. And then we also had the degeneration to W1 plus infinity. So, um, so this, this uh, two kinds of presentation, they already appear 
in the case of the surface A2. And this is kind of a generalization to an arbitrary surface. Um, okay, any, any questions? So how much more time do I have? Yeah, you have uh, as much time as you want. It, it was you who, who had some restric okay. uh, upper yes. restriction. So I have I have to go in uh, 20 minutes. Uh, okay, you have 20 minutes. Okay, okay, very good. Uh, all right, so now uh, how to uh, get Hecke operators, Hecke algebra, to act on a homology of M for some moduli spaces. So that's that's a question and number and also a, a third part. Um, so uh, first thing, um, let's let's just look at some example. So no, let's let's first start on a general surface. So on a general surface. Um, as you said, one can define um, a full algebra. There exists an algebra structure on the direct sum for all alpha of the uh, homology of Koch alpha uh, of S where this is a moduli stack of a compactly supported sheaves of class alpha, churn class alpha. Um, okay, so this is, if you want, is the full koha, where I allow the rank to vary. So uh, of course, um, there exists an action of uh, HS by uh, left or right uh, multiplication. Left or right multiplication. But it's, it's, um, less interesting than acting on some specific moduli spaces. So um, there's a notion of a Hecke pattern, Hecke pattern, notion of a Hecke pattern. So it's a collection of, um, so, it doesn't have to be closed. A collection of substacks. Let's say H. No, H is a bad name. Let's say N. N alpha inside of uh, core alpha. Uh, such that. Um, so let's say the action. So uh, when you look at this uh, correspondence, Koch uh, zero L times Koch alpha, then you have this Koch tilde. And here I have this Koch alpha plus zero L. Uh, inside of this, I have n alpha plus zero L, cos zero L times n alpha. And uh, let's say you have here cos depending on n. And so what you want for the action to uh, exist is that 
uh, this is um, such that uh, this is you define this as a Cartesian diagram. Right? So this is a definition of Koch tilde n, and then this you have this map which factors to here. That's the requirement. Such that there exists the factorization. Okay, and then uh, you can define an action of um, HS on the direct sum of the homology of all these n alphas. And you can see this, uh, for instance, in Kapranov Basro. In their paper, they have this formalism of Hecke pattern, and it allows you to construct lots of representations. So, for example, uh, for example, you can consider n alpha is uh, torsion free, uh, one dimensional sheaves. Um, yes, torsion free one dimensional sheaves, or, or even better, torsion free ideal sheaves, it's just ideal sheaves. Ideal sheaves, uh, I don't know, I inside OS. And, and then uh, you recover action of HS on the homology of all the Hilbert schemes. Uh, uh, N of S. Okay, and actually that's how we, we prove the theorem. We consider this action and then um, we define action on tautological classes. Uh, and then we use some results of Negut's that tells us how these actions can be described combinatorially, like something like a shuffle algebra. And then uh, we perform the computation there. And then we show that uh, the representation is in faithful in, in some sense. And then we use the theorem of kapranov vasco also. OK, but uh, this is not, not good, not uh, good enough. for um, uh, more interesting, well, let's say, more general uh, moduli spaces of semi-stable uh, sheaves, which generally uh, are in general not Hecke pattern. So um, it's kind of a miracle that, so any subsheaf of an ideal sheaf is, is an ideal, any finite co-length subsheaf of an ideal sheaf is an ideal sheaf. If you go to higher rank um, and you consider some other stability conditions, uh, or if you consider a moduli space of one dimensional sheaves instead of sheaves of full rank, then uh, this, this property is not true. Uh, so one example is you can take S is T star of X and um, you want moduli of one dimensional sheaves on S, uh, which is what Higgs bundles are. Then if you take a stable Higgs bundle and uh, you consider a, a sub sheaf of that, there is no reason that it should be stable. In general, it's not, not stable. So it seems that this uh, hectic pattern business is not going to be enough for the most interesting applications which consider uh, Higgs bundles. So instead we have to use some um, recent result of uh, Davison and Kinjo. So um, 
let me let me explain that. Um, so now now we consider just uh, this case. So S is T star X, and um, and we consider uh, the direct sum for all alpha of the homology of uh, Higgs bundles. Higgs, so R and B. Higgs, R and B. Uh, relatively prime? Nope, no, 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 all of them. So this is a stack, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, here also, ideal sheaves is viewed as a stack, but uh, an ideal sheaf is automatically stable. So as a stack, it's just a GM gerb over the moduli space, over the actual Hilbert scheme. So to be more precise, it's an action over um, the homology of Hilbert scheme bracket U. But we can get rid of the action of U. So uh, yeah, there's a BGM, there's a GM gerb uh, in this action, but somehow uh, we can get rid of it. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the full Koha. So this is the full Koha. And um, and then we use the following theorem of uh, Davison and Kinjo uh, to appear very soon, hopefully. Uh, it says that uh, there exists a DPS Lie algebra for this. So uh, let let me just give it a name instead of saying it's the full Koha. Let me say it's. Uh, H uh, full S. Okay. So uh, H full S is isomorphic to the enveloping algebra of some BPS Lie algebra. So, and this BPS Lie algebra is a direct sum over O RD G BPS RD bracket G as an algebra. Okay. Um, all right. And now there's an old result. Let me, let me couple this with an old result of Davison and Meinhardt, which says that um, if I look at, let's fix the slope new in Q and uh, let's consider uh, H S S full S no H S S not full just S S let me just put a uh, new S S uh, this is the uh, This is defined as the direct sum of the homology of Higgs semi-stable R and D, but now uh, D over R is new. Then the theorem says that uh, this is isomorphic to the enveloping algebra of some semi-stable BPS Lie algebra. Again. Ah. Enveloping algebra of the sum, again, D over R equals new of this G BPS semi-stable RD bracket G. Okay, and finally, another theorem, recent theorem that is due to uh, Davison, uh, Encar, and myself is the following, the restriction map from uh, G 
BPS RD bracket U to G BPS RD semi stable bracket U is an isomorphism. So it's a little bit subtle, but uh, this is this is really an uh, important result for, for application. It means that you can consider a BPSD algebra for the full Koha. And you can also fix a slope and consider just the BPSD algebra of that slope. And you have an obvious restriction map because semi-stable form an open substack. And everything is compatible with the Koha product. So um, Upon restriction, uh, it is an isomorphism. That's the theorem. And, and in other words, uh, if you look at res minus one, this gives a canonical lifting. A canonical uh, lifting of uh, G BPS semi-stable RD bracket U uh, to um, G BPS RD bracket U inside the full Koha. Uh, full. And, and what this lifting is, you have a class on the semi-stable locus and it gives you some kind of magic way to extend it across all unstable loci. The full unstable loci, locus, you have a, a kind of algorithmic way to uh, extend it to something that is still primitive. And now here's the very nice thing is that uh, of course, uh, adjoint action, Uh, of uh, Hecke operators uh, in, so it's G BPS zero L bracket U. So these are the generators. These are essentially this D, M, N, Xi, right? So Hecke operators in here uh, send uh, G BPS R D bracket U to G B P S R D plus L bracket U. And you see that because of this restriction map, this is isomorphic to G B P S semi-stable R D bracket U. And this is B P S semi-stable R D plus L bracket U. So we get these Hecke operators directly at the level of semi-stables. And so for instance, I just finished with this because I have to run. Uh, for instance, if R and D are relatively prime, and maybe R and D plus L are also relatively prime, then G B P S R D bracket U is, is just a full homology of the moduli stack of semi-stables, RD. Uh, and the same thing for R D plus L. So we get action of this algebra HS on, well, no, it's not. So we get action of Hecke operators on a homology of semi-stables. Let's say from at least from this semi-stable to this other semi-stable. And this is something that you cannot get by a uh, naive approach. You really, in order to define Hecke operator, 
uh, which I'm nicer, you really needed to extend the class on the, uh, the semi-stable heat shift from on RD, extend it to the full Koha. Otherwise, it's, it's just not well defined. Yeah, but you, you really need it at the level of BPSL algebras because at the level of Koha, it does not seem to be a big surprise because this is what wall crossing formulas are about. Yeah, you factorize, uh, your, you filter your stack by, by harder Narasiman type, and then you have this restriction maps at the level of, I would say, enveloping algebras. But of course, right. you, you don't know that they are enveloping algebras until you prove this uh, a result that BPS algebra does exist. But at the level of Kohas, I mean, it, it looks very natural. But you need uh, Lie algebras in order to implement this Hecke action of right. Hecke operators. Yeah. Yes. So the, you, at the level of Koha, uh, it's not clear to see that. So the, um, at least the way I see it, if you want to define action of Hecke operators uh, just directly at the level of Kohas, you need this Hecke pattern. So you need yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. You need you need to prove something. Yeah, I do not say that it's easy. I am saying that it's the level of Kohas, it's natural because ah, this right. is how how we, we we work with it with Maxim like in 2010. But without uh, we predicted, we conjectured that BPS algebras existed, but we didn't prove it at the time. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, it's very good. And where is P equal W? <laughs> P equal W will be for another day, but essentially uh, using oh. the action of Hecke operators, we reconstruct uh, uh, SL2 triple that describes the perverse filtration. So P equals W boils down to showing that there exists a certain good SL2 triple acting on the homology of semi-stable Modulized, uh, modulized stack of semi-stable sheaves, um, which uh, commutes in a certain way with tautological classes, multiplication with tautological classes, and preserves and is compatible with the perverse filtration in some sense. And we construct such an SL2 triple using Hecke operators. So maybe just a picture. If I plot my W algebra like this, this is W1 plus infinity. Uh, and here I add, I extended it by adding tautological classes. So if you look at uh, D02, uh, this is your element E of your SL2 triple. And here we have D11. And D20. Some kind of Nakajima operator. So this is H and this is F. And EHF is some SL2 triple, uh, which is compatible. with uh, perverse filtration. And that's not too crazy. That's not too crazy because uh, the perverse filtration is defined with respect to the Hitchin map. And the Hecke operators, they preserve the Hitchin map. So they only act on the fibers of the Hitchin map in some sense. Um, at least the, you know, the map, the, the Hitchin map does not change when you modify uh, uh, Higgs bundle at a point. And it's also compatible with uh, multiplication by tautological classes. So, um, which is just uh, included in the relations of the algebra. So somehow these tautological classes are the carton part of uh, this W1 plus infinity. So yes, once we have this, we 
managed to construct EHF. Then we use this, as I said, there's this trick with elliptic, but now with Kinjo and Ben, we should be able to do it without passing to elliptic locus and parabolic Higgs bundles and so on. Uh, directly using these uh, Hecke operators on the homology of stack of semi-stables, we can construct this SL2 triple, and that's how you can prove P equals W. Yeah, sorry. I... Yeah, yeah, I wish, of course, uh, to have more details about this last part, but maybe, I don't know, maybe another time. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, because I, re I really want to know how this uh, uh, is applied to, to this P equal W. There was also old um, uh, paper by, very, very old, by Diakonescu and I think two other physicists, they mm -hmm. can um, uh, use this SL2, some SL2 action coming from physics. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I, I was wondering whether it's the same as L2 triple. So. Ah. Yeah, I, I didn't think about it. So. Uh, yeah, there is a paper. It's actually, it has P equal W in the title. It's a very short paper. Yeah, I forgot what year it is, but at least probably two years, uh, 10 years. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, uh, very good. Uh, by the way, yeah, it's a good that you are writing Kansas talk, and, and I hope you will send all these notes to me. Right now. Uh, yep. Right now. Perfect. Yeah, exporting as PDF. Yeah, so it's really very interesting, and it's very pity that you, you so have slow, to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that you have to go, because it's too many questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry, sorry. Uh, um, let me stop yeah, sharing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, probably we should uh, invite you to give another talk in the next semester. Sure. No problem. I'm yeah. always happy. Okay. Great. Great. Well, uh, uh, and if you don't have time, so we should apologize because there will be no questions. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you have to go right now, uh, yeah, I have to go. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, all right. You can Olivia. always email if somebody yeah, has yeah, questions. Yeah, don't hesitate yeah. to email me. Sure. Uh, well, Olivia, thank you very much. Very interesting talk and too many indeed, too many questions. And I hope I'll invite you next semester to speak okay. more about that. Yep. Well, thanks a lot. And well, thank you for the invitation. Yeah. And.